Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Schwab Coaching for our next topic, gettoknowschwab.com, with our focus today exclusively on accounts and account monitoring. We're going to take a deep dive, if you will, into the use of some of our internal tools on schwab.com to kind of allow you to get familiarized with monitoring your accounts going forward into the future, evaluating your overall long-term plan and making adjustments along the way. Very important aspect to the long-term investing process, of course. So here uh, on the channel, we're excited to get down to business in a bit of a new way. Uh, I'm happy to have my buddy Michael Fairborn working in the chat for all of you. So uh, say hey to Michael for us. Uh, we'll try to keep an eye on that chat as well today because I know that a lot of you are new to Schwab, new to the website, gonna, going to have some specific questions. So I certainly invite those. Feel free to put those into the queue for us uh, as we continue the conversation here today. Now, uh, some reminders for you that are pretty important. Number one, I am going to be working in a demonstration mode of Schwab.com. And really the only thing that that implies is I want you to not utilize any of the information we see today as uh, reasons for basing your decisions of any kind. So if you're watching the account that I'm working in and you see some news or detail, quotes, et cetera, don't rely on that info. Make sure you're logging in live uh, to view your own details, own information exclusively, okay? So no no decisions based on what we're seeing here. And further, the the, um, the details we're walking through today, of course, are, should, should exclusively be considered as educational and for your informational purposes uh, going forward as well. So um, now this is a new series, everybody. And so as such, we're going to work through over the coming four or five weeks, uh, at least these next five topics, really account monitoring. And we do have a finding trade ideas segment. This one invo involves the use of our Schwab.com screener tool can be a one or two day plan. It can be a two day segment if we want. Uh, we'll see exactly how the first one goes next week when we start drilling in to looking for trade ideas. I think we might get two segments out of that one. Uh, then we spend another segment on placing trades, utilizing the trade functionality within Schwab.com for equities, options, uh, exchange traded funds, the whole plan, just to get you familiar with how to use the website. And then finally, we have one on account services, which will more or less get you familiar with uh, use of our profile section, uh, alert functionality, building accounts, and so forth. Uh, getting yourself scored away there will also be quite helpful. So my hope, of course, as we go forward is that you return on a week-to-week -week basis and we continue to uh, improve and build our knowledge base as it relates to Schwab.com. So with that, everybody, we're going to start with account monitoring today. Let's dive right into it. I'm going to bring uh, bring up now a Schwab.com page here for us. And this is our account summary page, everybody. Now, we have a couple of things that we want to make note of here to the initial breakdown of our summary. And, and that is that there is some functionality that will allow you to eliminate some of the detail on your screen with a single carrot click, as I like to call it. And that carrot, of course, is the little icon here in our upper right. And so while I have a summary breakdown, inclusive of the values associated with my three accounts noted here, I can eliminate the chart if I don't want to see it. Uh, in some cases, everybody, this might be perfect for those of you working in an office base, for example. You may not want to have all your details kind of over the shoulder and available, so you might consider uh, minimizing your sections in here. Now, the uh, individual accounts we're working with, we have three that have been created. These have been put to work a few months prior, and we have also got access to updating settings here. So we don't have to stick exclusively with what we're provided, but I bring this up because many of you are uh, utilizing assets and managing assets and accounts outside of Schwab. And that is very common, of course. What we want to remind you to consider is to bring those details to your Schwab portfolios. Ma the majority reason for this, of course, is we want you to be able to incorporate them in your ongoing management. You need to know exactly what you got in the way of cash positions, market value of equities, uh, real estate for a lot of you might want to house those details here as well. 
But the more provided information you give to the Schwab.com webpage, then the more detail you'll be able to expand on and build a properly developed portfolio. Uh, as you're going to see when we go forward into some of these tools, uh, having access to the entire breakdown of your allocated balances is very important. So this pop-up here gives you the chance not only to create some um, individualized groups here, which is kind of a, ni a nice idea to minimize or collect your accounts together. Remember that while we have an opportunity to look at all of our accounts combined, you can create individual groups so that you can manage them a little more easily. So if you are the manager, for example, of multiple accounts, you might want a group that is gonna be managed similar uh, to be all together, right? So if you have retirement assets, you might wanna manage those in a single manner. That single approach would be collective amongst those accounts and creating a single group for that would make sense. Uh, and maybe some of you are managing multiple accounts that have just different strategies altogether. That can be really helpful. Uh, so consider building in groups, utilizing your settings here. And if you do have non-account, non-Schwab accounts, pardon me, that you want to add, use our add non-Schwab. And again, as I noted, uh, you can add real estate here, but if you do click add account and work through the disclosure details, it's a pretty simple process. You get to just choose where you're housing those assets. Obviously, some of you might still have those uh, TD accounts. Uh, you can certainly find those. You'd also simply be patient and allow that stuff to come over. We'll manage that for you. Uh, but you can obviously locate your individual institution here pretty easily and get that detail built in. So uh, I think you'll see as we work through this a little bit how helpful that will be to your ongoing plan and process, uh, getting a little bit more comfortable with the overall plan of uh, managing an account in the long haul, which does take a lot more work perhaps than many of us would have thought. So um, let's start with um, moving off of this page. I see we got some questions about adding watch lists. I, I'm gonna try to make this as simple as I can for you, everybody. Uh, if you go up under trade here, we do have watch lists. Now I'll admit, it's not as prominently displayed as I would like to see. However, it is right here for now under the trading platform section over here. So if you wanted to just start creating your watch list, you can do so right from there. Uh, if we make another small move into looking at an individual equity as an example, and I put in uh, General Electric here, you can use the little drop down in the hamburger here to add it to a watch list. Okay, so this can be quite quick and easy. So as far as um, adding to new watch, adding to existing watch lists and so forth, this can be done real easily. As you can see, we've got some drop downs with our existing watch list. You get to pick which one to add it to. You can create a new one right off the drop down. So I just wanted to answer that because I know there are so many of you who really value the use of watch lists and accessing and building and utilizing them on a day to day basis. Uh, I wanted to make sure I got to that for you all. Now, in terms of what we're focusing on today, account monitoring, what we're going to do is jump back into accounts. And what I've done is just left click on the accounts tab here, everybody. That gives me access to the, met, to the uh, navigation beneath it. Where we're going to head is the portfolio checkup tool. Okay. So I'm going to click that. And it's going to take a quick second to load. And what we're going to talk about here are the model approach to putting money to work and, and adding to that portfolio on a consistent basis, rebalancing it, very commonly incorporated on an annual process, right? You meet with a financial consultant, we look at the breakdown of your overall portfolio, we see the model you're working against and say, all right, this makes a little bit of sense. You've got too much in this group, let's take some from there and apply it to these other areas. That's exactly what the pie charts are all about. Now. In portfolio analysis, this would all be really helpful if we have already done the pre-work. And the pre-work is all about establishing the portfolio we're striving for. So let's do that by first clicking on portfolio setup. Now here, under the portfolio setup, remember back to the beginning of the conversation. I mentioned creating individual groups for yourself. Well, that's where we can create these in individual portfolios for a management process that differs from one group to the next. So we've got total Schwab, which would be inclusive of all of our accounts. We have Schwab test. And if I 
collect on Schwab test. You'll notice I've got Schwab accounts down below, the one that we have titled Barry, and then we have this Schwab One account. Those are the two that are checked. Okay, now we have this other account with no balance at the moment, um, but we're just essentially evaluating the two with the cash or with the investment positions. Now, so we've selected the proper account. Next, what we need to do is determine the proper allocation. And the proper allocation, everybody, can be acquired through two plans or two ideas. One is we simply rely on what's known as the profile table. Check this out. This is pretty cool. Uh, for those of you who might find yourselves a little bit more, maybe just analytical in nature is the way I like to think of it. Um, you know, if you just look at the numbers, best case years, worst case years, horizon, for, you know, for the investment window and all of that stuff, this might be the easy way for you to go about it. OK, uh, you might even already have an inkling as to the style or type of portfolio you might be considering. You might already know that you want to be relatively moderate in nature. That's fine. Uh, the one thing I want to remind you all about is to consider the returns, but don't be tied to returns. Remember, returns are only for the window of time in which they are noted. And we do know further that even though we build a model uh, or build our accounts to meet the model, Absolutely, we know we can get a better case year than the best year we have historically. We could also get a worse year than the worst case year we've seen historically. So know that, again, these are just estimations based on history. They can be exceeded both directions. OK, my other note to bring here as we're selecting the specific model allocation against which to base all of your decisions going forward, at least in terms of the long term plan, is that maybe lean into more conservative rather than more aggressive. And so while you're going through this plan here, looking at the breakdown of what these historical models have provided uh, and the way that it looks, it might not feel the same uh, as going through, like, for example, the questionnaire, which I'm going to highlight for you here. Uh, but my point is that if you do go through the questionnaire and you find it says something like, now, based on your time frame, based on your tolerance for risk, as you've stated, at least, moderate aggressive fits for you. That would not be uncommon. You know, anybody with a time frame longer than 10 years and a, and a relatively, you know, comfortable amount of risk uh, available to them, they're probably going to lean moderate to moderate aggressive. But I would just I would just say consider starting more conservative. So if your choice is based on the answer to the questionnaire, by the way, which is a great way to get this figured out, especially for those of you who are maybe new to this planning process, new to the investment long-term process, asking yourself all of these questions is a very good way to kind of allow our platform, but also give yourself an understanding of how Things change when you when you shift your answers a little bit. You know, if you say your time frame is 11 years or more to start out, you're definitely going to be provided an ample opportunity for a bit more risk because the longer your time frame, the more risk you can take on in the short run and have ample time to make it up in the long run. But my point is that if you go through the questionnaire, you find that it leads you towards moderate aggressive, maybe aggressive. Consider starting less aggressive because it never fails, everybody. The moment you think you've got that uh, understanding of risk turned out, you see the market returns, you find yourself maybe less comfortable once your real money is on the table. It's just a, an inevitability, at least it has been in my experience. So um, that, that would be my encouragement. Now, a lot of these questions are very standardized, like time frame for when you're going to be taking your money out. What about your familiarity with investments? So, you know, you can go, go through all of these and give serious consideration to things like the one year return plan and so forth. Now, this is the Schwab model, but I would actually recommend we do so via the models 3.0. So I'm just going to highlight this because this is a little bit more detailed in its approach, everybody. So my encouragement would absolutely be to utilize uh, the Schwab Models 3.0, check out the questionnaire, and then as I was noting, look at some of these return details. Um, statement best represents your opinion. You put to work $100,000 of a hypothetical portfolio, and a year later, you notice that the portfolio had a maximum 
return up there. You had a great year at one point, up 34,000 from your investment, but also at your low point, you were down 23, nearly 23,000 from your original investment. Pick this in a, in a real manner. Think hard about it. Put yourself to the test. How would you really feel if this money was on the table and you were suddenly looking at a $22,000 loss uh, fairly quickly? Many of us would say we have comfort for that. But again, until that until you're really put to the test, it can be difficult to know exactly. So, uh, again, consider maybe a little more conservation than aggression. Uh, and again, continue to work through these questions. I think you'll find that all of them will aid you really in pinpointing your true level of comfort and tolerance for risk. And really, that's what it's all about, everybody, is what can you sustain? Um, a good reminder is, in my view at least, if you don't concern yourself with the market on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis, and your approach is as simple as, uh, I know what my plan is, and I'm sticking to it, meaning Every time I have money, I'm adding the money to the existing model. I'm putting that money in the market. I'm not concerned about the machinations on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. I'm working towards that money being available for me in 20 or 25 more years. That is really the right idea for the long-term investor who doesn't need to pay attention to the short-term stuff because a lot of it in the investing world, if you're thinking long, long run, everybody – a lot of what we do on a day-to-day basis is really just noise. You can put the money to work and take a very simple approach and do just fine uh, in the long haul. And that's really what this portfolio checkup tool is all about. So once you have defined your model, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate my questionnaire here. And I'm going to bring us back to the analysis because I have a um, – oops, I'm going to hit save and continue. I have a – Uh, portfolio analysis ready to go, working against a moderate allocation, okay? So looking at my overall account today, we see that uh, our asset allocation is a little bit wonky, right? And I'm saying that kindly because essentially what we have is a lot of large cap, we have a lot of cash, and we have a little bit of small cap. And compared to our moderate plan, we need to have some fixed income. It's pretty clear. We have no yellow in our existing pie. So we got to figure out how to get some yellow in there. Now, we're not going to work to put that about current allocation versus our target. Here we learn we've got at least $825 too much large cap. And we have $200 too much small cap. But we don't have any international component. So one thing we could quickly do, we could certainly sell a little large cap, sell a little small cap, take that $1,000 of overinvestment in those two groups and apply it to international. That's one good start. We could also take a big chunk of our existing cash and put that money to work in fixed income and or international as well. So this gives us a couple of very generic ideas. And remember, when we're talking about allocation, that is the big picture stuff. Large cap, small cap, international, fixed income and cash. Big picture stuff. Now, as we go forward, we're going to look into sector diversification. And for a lot of you, this is where things get to be a little bit more fun because we get to work on finding individual investments to plug the holes that might be missing in our overall portfolio view. So first of all, before I do that, note the the, uh, little yield symbol here, just a heads up that we are out of model allocation. That's what that's telling us. The the greens are good, of course. Uh, The yellow yield lets us know we got some work to do. Now, if we go ahead and hit sector diversification, we are gonna get the breakdown of the global BMI viewpoint and how we sit relative to those intended percentages. So here we have a portfolio that at least according to our approach is okay in line. The reason it's okay and in line is that uh, we are not out of balance by 20%, okay? So the 20% out of balance is what will make this uh, a yield sign for you. And as you look down below, we do have a couple of pretty decent discrepancies, certainly too much uh, in the way of communication services. Uh, 24% there, we should only be at seven. Uh, Technology here, we've got 38%, we should only be at 20. Okay, so there's a couple of areas that are high, but not out of balance relative to our model approach. 
Now, that doesn't mean that it's, that's the right approach for you, but uh, at least for now, in terms of highlighting uh, areas that need to be addressed, sector diversification per the 20% guideline is in line. But one thing that stands out to me immediately, and I'm guessing uh, to all of you as well here, is that we've got no materials, no real estate, and no utilities. Now, reminder, if we are working to build a model allocation approach, then it is important to be as close to that model as possible. Otherwise, those historical returns become far less reliable in terms of our own expectations. Now, again, I stated that up front. We know that we can't adhere to those returns, but we're trying to get an approximation of those returns to really ensure that all of us, as we put this money to work, are comfortable. And the one thing we know about sector diversification that is out of balance is that that, that by itself can create risk that you that you don't need in your portfolio. So consider being more balanced than we are here. Obviously, in my approach, I'm trying to create some areas of issue, right? I want you to see things that need to be addressed. And that's exactly what this is highlighting. We got some work to do if we were going to have this modeled approach in line. Okay. Now, one other thing before we move off of this, I'm going to click on a more detailed analysis of your holdings by sector. This is kind of hidden down below, but I'll tell you, this is awesome to check out because when you are the trader or investor who's holding exchange traded funds or mutual funds, it becomes very difficult to know what percentage of those funds are properly allocated to these individual groups. Now, yes, my portfolio is all individual equities, okay? So this isn't going to be as helpful as I'd like it to be. But I want you to take note of this and click on this more detailed analysis when you have a chance, everybody, because if you're sitting with mutual funds and ETFs, then what you're going to get is a clear understanding of how if you sold a portion of a fund, what kind of impact it's gonna have on your allocation of your sector diversification, okay? That to me is a big part of that. And I think if you are working on this, and granted, reminder, this is not something to do consistently. This is a once a year, at most twice a year, sit down, see how things look, make sure you're in balance. Um, that's the process you probably wanna take. So. You know, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time in here, and yet I think it's important to understand what are you getting out of a sale of a certain fund, for example. Individual equities, it's not going to look nearly as uh, difficult, obviously. All right. So we'll move off of sector diversification. Let's move in to equity concentration. Now, in terms of asset allocation, if you are building a plan for the long haul and investing to meet a plan 20 years down the road, Diversification within asset classes amongst domestic market sectors is key to your risk reduction, but you can scuttle your risk reduction entirely with an over allocated portfolio to any individual stock. So outweighted or concentrated positions can have a big hindrance on your returns. Now, it is true. They also can provide a boost to your returns, but fall under the, the guide, uh, guidelines of Stability and risk aversion is better than aggression, at least as it relates to long haul investing, I think. Uh, and I think a lot of investors who have put themselves in a difficult spot in the past and have not been rewarded for uh, maybe this concentration approach, you can consider me one of those. I mean, I certainly have made my own investment mistakes in my, in my 25 years. Um, I have learned that that's not the approach that I want to take. And what we're doing here is trying to get you to that similar viewpoint. Now, again, we're working with a 20% allocation uh, discrepancy. So you're not gonna, going to get the yield symbol unless you are more than 20% out of balance. However, for a lot of investors, this might be a better number at 10%, to be perfectly frank. And I think that it would make uh, sense to maybe go again, not to 20, but to 10. But you're only going to get the notification from us if it breaks 20. 
Um, I did see a question in the queue, uh, LZ, about use, using the global BMI and the benchmarks. Right now, at least as it relates to the current setup, we don't have that availability to alter the benchmarks. But uh, it is something I think that should be considered. And I, I think as we go forward, you know, one of the things that I should have noted up front is this is by no means the end game uh, tool for you all. It's a current tool, but we're really working through a lot of updates and upgrades and enhancements. And I think that some of those enhancements are going to get us further down the line towards customization of your not just benchmarks, but your overall process. I think it's going to also look a heck of a lot better uh, as well. Uh, a lot of the changes that have been implemented have uh, been, have really are beautiful as it relates to the layout and uh, the aesthetics of the website. So uh, some good changes coming here as we continue forward. Okay, uh, so equity concentration, big part. Let's try not to keep things that are too concentrated. If that's a conversation you need to have, don't forget the service teams are there 24 seven. We can even have a much deeper conversation with you if you find yourself really concentrated. For many of us who have the, the same employer for a long time, you may very well have a lot of employer stock that needs to be you know, cons uh, um, removed or exited in a very considerate fashion. You may very well need a plan. You may, may very well need to be working with a specialist. Don't hesitate to reach out for that. It's one of the great reasons you've got 24 seven service with Schwab. Now, um, okay, after equity concentration, we'll move into fixed income. Now, you're not going to find anything here for me because, of course, I don't have my fixed income, but we might, uh, as the market as maybe getting to a, a shifted window of time as it relates to rates, this might be something for us to start considering. So we may very well need to sit down and do that. And then finally, the quality section is specifically looking at equity uh, individual equity positions as it relates to the Schwab equity ratings. That would be our A through F grade scale. Now, that's something that we're not going to have time to dive into for you today. Uh, but I do want to note that you should be looking on our, our calendar for anything that discusses the Schwab equity ratings. And you can absolutely dive deeper into those here internally uh, within our research capabilities. I would really invite you to do that um, when we get into stocks and stuff and try to highlight some of that for you. But, you know, the platform itself just needs a little bit of review view um, uh, on your end just to make sure that you fam you're familiarized yourself with the process and the concepts of the Schwab equity ratings. Unfortunately, we don't have the uh, opportunity to dive into that today. Now, under uh, equity quality, we do get into uh, the mutual fund quality, which we're utilizing uh, Morningstar ratings there. Again, as you can see, I don't have any individual portfolio or rather individual um, mutual funds within the portfolio, and that's why we're not seeing those. Okay. Oops. Let's get that off. Let's see here. All right. So we have seen equity concentration. We've seen sector diversification, fixed income. And we need, after this, we will go back and to the top. We can also generate an actual report here for us. So notice I'm getting a pop-up window here. And this is giving me an actual detailed analysis. So for those of you, maybe uh, you want to print this off and or save it, you can get a very clear breakdown of all that we've just gone through in a document format just by clicking the create report, as you can see. So um, obviously, you know, having some gaps in my portfolio doesn't help. But certainly, um, you know, there's an opportunity to utilize this specific tool to find those areas and find those gaps. Now, one of the things that I mentioned off the jump today was how important that can be as it relates to um, having your external accounts noted. And I think that if, if I go back and just remind you all about the, uh, the sector diversification tool, this is an, an excellent example as to why everybody, I think, because once more, you know, you might just have a single equity sitting at the bank. Uh, maybe you have an account that is the employer account sitting at the bank. Maybe that's where your concentration resides. But if that company is in a, a sector where you are at waiting, according to all the work that we do at Schwab from what we can see, uh, and then you've got this one large position in a company that's in that same space, you know, you might actually look like information technology or when you thought you looked more like, you know, something like uh, industrials, you were more closely lined up. 
Uh, but you might be out of balance relative to what you're hoping for. So again, I, I just think we can absolutely do a far better job uh, of incorporating all of our uh, collectible or investable assets under the umbrella of a tool like this so that you can know definitively that, that you're taking the holistic viewpoint of everything. I think it's very important. Okay, uh, so usually that conversation, as I have had it, takes quite a bit longer for me with because I'm on here typically doing it with another uh, – with another coach and we've gone through this rather quickly what that means is we have an opportunity maybe to check out some of your specific questions everybody so um let's take a look all right so we have an opportunity to talk about watch lists so let's do this again uh, we had some questions about the watch list i'm going to bring us back to my accounts and summary page now, the initial question was, how do I go ahead and access that watch list? Well, again, we can do that most easily through the mega navigation up top and go to watch list. And then from here, this is where we are, are getting you, I believe, Wayne, is to add multiple stocks right away. So we're going to create a brand new watch list. Let's just give this one a name, although I want to make sure I've got, well, see, I've already got Kev's there. So we're going to create one for Mr. Fairborn right now. We're going to make mics here for you. And so we'll just go ahead and add a few stocks you guys might be familiar with. And I hit enter, and it added just one. So if I want to add more, I'm going to add symbol. Let's do Microsoft. Okay, so I'm just hitting the add more in here, everybody. And then I can get through a few of these, for example. Okay. Let's add in oh, one more. How about Texas Instruments? There we go. And then I can hit add and save. And now, now I've got an entire list, right? Well, not an entire list, but I've got five for me to work with. Okay. So now at this point, I have a new watch list created. I can add to it. And of course, in my drop down menu, everybody, when I go back to, uh, like, say, stocks and ETFs, and I'm looking at an individual, whoops, let's go back to research, that is, sorry, research and stocks, not, not trade them. But I'm on the individual equity page. Well, then, when I, if I've got a, a stock that I know I want to add, I just hit the little hamburger, add to watch list, and then I get my drop down. And there's Mike. OK, so really, yes, you're going to want to spend a little time building out your lists uh, here in Schwab.com. These will be uh, quickly accessible and easily able to add to uh, as well, whether it be right from here um, or, you know, you have, you'll find other areas as well where you can uh, add to watch list, update watch list and so on. Um, OK, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to ask. Actually, I'm going to ask everybody. As it relates to what we covered to this point relative to um, the portfolio checkup tool, uh, the questionnaire, the profile tables, the use of the report and whatnot, uh, anybody that has questions about those specifically, now would be an excellent time to get those into the queue. Alternatively, I'm going to just look through the queue here a minute and see what other questions I can address uh, to make sure that we're getting to uh, a number of other ideas simply because I got the time for you. And I feel like, boy, again, when I'm doing this solo, this goes so much faster. I'm not, I know there's no banter with me and anybody. So uh, it goes a little bit quicker. So let's see what I've got. Um, yes. Uh, so ana analysis, analyst viewpoints, consensus details, earnings per share, ratings, Good idea, good question here, Kristen. I actually, I see that um, we can probably do something like that, but I will mention, um, is at least as it relates to Schwab.com, the, the easiest way to find a lot of that is through a comparison. So I have General Electric in at the moment, and I'm just gonna scroll down this screen and close these up for you guys. As you can see, these little widgets, I just keep these closed. It makes my 
process a little easier. And we are going to spend an entire segment on uh, the individual equity page, but I thought I'd t use this as a qu quick example. So I'm just scrolling down the individual equity page to peers and ratios comparison. This is really kind of helpful, everybody. So we have General Electric in there. We got the peer group in there. And yes, we are on the overview of detail. Now, uh, you were asking specifically about consensus there, Kristen. Well, here is consensus, at least as it relates to these companies. Now, you'll notice it's, you know, you're going to get some uh, basic details there, but we can also hit show more. And I'm going to get a little bit more information, which does include the uh, relative performance on a price chart. And then I can minimize my carrots and I can get a better visual of all of the same information. So I think that this is um, a really nice area, and I'll mention once up top, if um, if you're looking at these going, well, I'm not familiar here, why do I have this company versus that one, or I need another, I wanna eliminate a couple, you can, these are obviously customizable, just throw in whichever stocks you want. Uh, of course, if you're doing comparison, I think it makes sense to um, uh, consider Similar groupings, obviously, stocks within the same spaces, uh, the same sector or same industry. Um, here, you can, and in fact, tell the system to populate the competitors for you. So it'll put them right back in there. Uh, I think, so it's based on the industry they're in and market cap is your focus. So essentially, it's getting those uh, that are nearest in market cap weighting of the stock in focus. And of course, we can save our comparison so you can come back to it at any moment. And you'll notice here the drop down for comparison saving as well. So if you do save something and you wanted to come back to it, you wouldn't have to rebuild it. So that's kind of nice. So again, Kristen, I think it's it's a little bit reverse engineered perhaps, but if you start from the side of the stock you're wondering about, the group you're wondering about, the industry you're wondering about, and get into the comparisons. I think that's where you're going to find a lot of this information that you're looking for. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, Mike, your question about the that old theory about the, you know your age as it relates to um, uh, amount of fixed income in one's portfolio. I believe the idea is that you take your age and subtract it from 100, and the residual amount is the amount of money you should have in uh, the equity side of the market. If, if you just think of your age, I think ultimately what it suggests is as you get older, the amount of money you have in fixed income and cash investments should be increasing. So um, if everything like that uh, is you know, saying uh, working against an age of 100, you know, as you're, if you're 60, 65, 70, you should be getting closer to you know, 65, 70% uh, invested in more stable and fixed in instruments uh, as you get a little bit older. That's a good ballpark estimation there. Um, let's see what else you guys have. Really active, and I, I see that uh, my buddy here, um, Mike has done a really nice job of staying up on a lot of these questions. So as always, thank you there. Um, so no, okay, the question about currently adding things like dividend aristocrats, not yet here in uh, Schwab.com. That is a cool function of uh, Thinkorswim, isn't it? Uh, really nice to allow you to do that. Not just uh, something as simple as dividend aristocrats, but to create your lists in uh, the platform so quickly for um, you know any number of things, the uh, top movers, top uh, you know, gainers, losers, percentage and volume and any number of items in there. I've been so impressed with um, some of that scanning technology available in Thinkorswim. Um, I think some of that stuff uh, are items you're going to be able to locate here in Schwab.com at some point. But again, um, the, the roadmap is a bit messy, um, but it is very, very uh, robust. So what you're going to see as we go forward, are the, say the next six months, 12 months and further, uh, is going to be an, a lot of the uh, big stuff that y'all are asking for to be incorporated into Schwab.com uh, as well as elsewhere. So um, 
I really think that uh, that that's the takeaway is that our process is one that should be working to take all the best uh, bits of TD, bring those over to Schwab, incorporate into everything we do. But a lot of that's going to come from all of you, everybody. So I know that uh, we are in the habit of asking for your input. Well, we're going to ask for it again. We need your surveys. We would love to hear from you. Uh, take a moment to complete one. I think we can find one to get into the queue here for you. A, a with a link and I think I might actually have one available to me and if I do I'm going to throw it into the queue for all of you but ultimately what we want is the ideas that are important for you things that uh, that you definitively relied upon at TD you're not finding here at Schwab it could simply be a process of us needing to, to highlight those for you but it also might be that we haven't been able to uh, to uh, implement yet so Please take that moment to spend time sharing your ideas, your insights, your needs. What are the things that you really relied on that you're not yet finding? And, and I will remind you, I believe that a good takeaway approach is one that has you asking, not I wonder if we can do this at Schwab, but more likely, just how does Schwab do this? Uh, it, chances are that you're going to find just about Everything that, that you had at TD is going to be available. Uh, again, it might take a little bit of time, might take some work and enhancement on our end, but chances are that what, we've, uh, what we're working towards is going to be uh, able to provide you exactly what you've been working with all along. Our goal, of course, is essential parity between firms to the extent that you know, and users ultimately of TD are gonna find that there's nothing about Schwab that really differs other than process. Items available to you, uh, tools available, features and functions, all of that stuff we would like to see at parity in the long haul. So um, again, take a moment if you can to uh, provide us with some feedback. Um, importing, yeah, let's go back into watch list, everybody. The watch list function here. So at the moment, the importation is where you're going to struggle, everybody. We're just not able at this point right now with watch list to bring that stuff over simply. So you're going to have to do a little bit of manual work initially, but you can do that here in schwam.com. Uh, you, do, you do have the ability, of course, to uh, edit your columns and uh, customize those. Um, but in terms of importing from the existing platform, uh, you can do that in toss from I believe we could do that in toss from old, so like toss green into uh, what we call toss blue, Schwab T, uh, TDA toss into uh, thinkorswim, excuse me, into Schwab thinkorswim. Um, some of that importation I think is available, but at least in the website, unfortunately, we're going to do a lot of rebuilding initially. Uh, and I know that that's not ideal. Um, that's definitely something that has been noted. Uh, but again, if we get a chance to complete the survey, we would love to hear from you about it. I would encourage you to keep saying those things because the more of um, what we what we are hearing about, obviously, that does put priority on it. So I think that that's a good approach. Um, OK, everybody, and I apologize. I did use my my think or swim jargon there. I do mean think or swim um, as a uh, platform use it for you there just uh, as a reminder now. I think, yeah, there we go. So Mike do, does have a um, link there in the queue for you, everybody. Click that link under uh, the most recent post uh, to complete a survey. Uh, again, your feedback is invaluable for us. So um, with that, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, reminder that uh, the best place to check us out is going to be, in terms of our calendar at least, schwab.com slash coaching. There you are. I'll hit that. And the cool thing here, we've made some great updates. You can search by us coaches. You can search by the products we're discussing. You can search by skill level. You can search by the series itself. So if you got something out of today's segment and you want to put it back on your queue, go ahead and do so here with um, get to know. At least it's supposed to be in here. Not here, of course. That's what I get. All right, well, maybe not get to know, but how about getting started with Thinkorswim or getting started with technical analysis? All of these would be great. Don't forget, you can add these to your calendar. You can get email reminders, some big enhancements and improvements here on the coaching um, on the calendar for you. So uh, now a reminder that tomorrow is Thursday. Now, normally we have Trader Talk, but 
Thursday morning, we're going to be rounding out with uh, our spotlight on futures. Schwab's director of futures and Forex, Mike Zaremski, will be on with James Boyd. I know JB's got quite the following here, so I'm certain he'd love to see you all then. So uh, that's uh, what you're going to be looking for next from us tomorrow morning. Spotlight on futures, 930 a.m. Eastern with Mr. Zaremski and Mr. Boyd. So with that, I'll leave you all for the rest of your Wednesday. I hope it's a great one for all of you. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for participating in the show. I certainly appreciate that, and I hope you all have a great Wednesday. I'll see you again real soon.